So this week, um, I want to talk about a kind of serious topic which needs, which I believe needs to be talked about way more, especially in England and Britain. Well, England slash Britain, <laughs> because it is kind of the same thing. But um, as you can tell by the thumbnail, this is a video about mental health. Um, so if you suffer from any mental health problems, issues, this might help um um <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on my bed as well and i've kind of made my room a bit more comfy i'm sitting on my bed since i wanted to be a bit more comfortable for this because it is a hard topic to talk about especially when i find in my family we don't talk about mental health at all um when i told my mum that i had depression she just went no you don't <laughs> literally she just went no you don't and I was like yeah yeah mama do because um I went to a place called Streetwise in Newcastle to like do a counseling session almost and they had to end up bringing my mum because I, they thought I was at a high level of like risk a high risk level and they were like scared for my own safety at that point in time so they rang up my mother to tell them what I'd been telling them and things like that she needed to be notified as I was like I wasn't old enough to look after myself I have iRobot on as well on the TV so if I keep looking up it's because I, I can still speak very easily by looking at the TV it kind of makes it a little bit easier talking about this topic but um so my mum got told by that and she went, why, why are you saying all these things? Why, why have you told these people like these lies? And I was like, it's not lies, mum. Um, and she's like, well, why didn't you... <laughs> she's like, she really didn't understand and she didn't believe me, to be honest, which, which like made it almost harder. There's thousands and thousands of people throughout the world who suffer from mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, insomnia. I'm trying to think of, like, off the top of my head, it is quite hard to think of mental health issues, but there is tons and tons of mental health issues. If you ever feel like you may have one, I would highly recommend to go talk to a counsellor or got the doctors and they will help. Um so I have um depression and anxiety. I also have some other things which I personally I try to keep those ones to myself because I don't want people knowing about the other ones in case they start treating me a bit differently. There is a few people who know about them and my boyfriend, bless his soul, right? Um, accidentally told his dad that I had one of these, um, like one of this mental health, like a mental health issue, and I kind of didn't want him knowing, because at, at that time I'd only been going out with him for a couple of months, and I didn't want him to think that, like I wasn't good enough for his son, well, like that his son shouldn't be going out with me because of this, because of me having a mental health issue, but, um. I kind of suffer in silence for that one, so I'm not going to touch up on what it is. But um, my depression and anxiety, I, I, I've i kind of learned how to handle it myself. Um, I went to counselling a couple of times and I didn't find it helped, so I stopped going because I'm not one for talking. <laughs> I, I do suffer in silence quite a bit. And people don't realise, like, especially people like like me who, tr like, hide it so well. I know so many people who have mental health issues and you wouldn't know because they've learned how to hide it. Like, people think, uh, like, I uh, told my friend Lauren, another Lauren I mentioned in the last video, I was talking to her about things and she, like... I went, oh yeah, I tend, like, if I feel down, I'll be crying at home, and she's like, um, 
you don't seem like you can cry I'm just like I like I don't try to draw attention to myself for having these the reason I'm making this video is to help people who have depression who have anxiety who have mental health issues because it needs to be tackled it people don't understand that it is a real thing it's a really big issue there's so many people in the world who have it there's so many youtubers who have made videos on mental health and how it affects them to try and spread the word and I may not be a major youtuber like Dan Howell or Nudarella like they've done mental health issues they've done mental health videos D Dan Howell has depression he made a massive video on it anxiety is such like I know so many people who have anxiety issues and I think it's it sounds weird but most of them are girls who I know and I think it comes from the pressures of when you're young you get told you have to do this you have to do this you have to be this you have to fit this criteria otherwise you're not good at all it's not right, it's not correct. Be yourself, be you, do what you want to do. It's like, it sounds so like cheesy and stupid, but it's true. Like, my, I, I'm not sure where my anxiety came from, but I struggle with meeting new people and it's, it does kind of come across, like the reason I get scared is because I'm scared in case I say something wrong or I offend them or, I'll say something and I won't like is or like I, like some, I'll do something wrong and they won't they'll never want to see us again. It it's worse when as well asking like asking for things and like not even big things like asking for food. Like, that was so stupid, but, like, I almost have a fear of rejection. Like, for somebody to say no, it sounds stupid, but that is a thing which makes me scared. Like, in my boyfriend's house, I won't ever ask his parents for food or ask if I can get something in their house. And they're just like, oh, help yourself, and I still don't. Like, a lot of the times I'll go to Paul, oh, I'm hungry, and they'll be like, oh, do you want to take something? I'm like, yes, please. And if I come, well, come down and see what you want, because I'm, I'm too scared to like go down and just start looking in the cupboards, and because especially in my house we have our own food, it sounds weird, but I have like, I have a bag literally there in my room and it's filled with crisps, noodles, and things like that. Then it's my food, and it stays in my room so nobody eats it. And then my mum has her things downstairs. My brother gets some things as well, and. I almost have a fear of, say, especially with Paul and his dad and, and things like that, or his dad, or his mum might get some chocolate or, like, biscuits and things like that, and, like, something nice to treat themselves to food. <laughs> it's just it's, it's a stupid thing, but people treat themselves to food. I love treating myself to a good, like, to a good bar of chocolate and things like that, and I can't leave it downstairs because people will eat it. The other day, like, like, it was last week, I bought a bar of chocolate, marshmallows and squirty cream, because I made hot chocolate and I put the chocolate on top, then I put the chocolate back in the fridge, the bar of chocolate back in the fridge. Went down about half an hour later and it had gone in my brother day and I was like really looking forward to it. So I kind of don't, like if I don't know who it's owned by, I won't touch it. So it can sound stupid, but like I get anxiety from that. Like it's such a stupid thing, but it can make me so scared, like, to just even ask for a simple thing, like some food. That's how bad my anxiety's got. Like, fair enough if I go to a restaurant. I'll be like, oh, can I get this? If I'm paying, I'll be like, oh, can I have this? I'm fine with, like, talking to rest like, restaurants and getting on buses and things like that. But I have some friends who can't even get on buses. My brother can't get on buses. He, he hates getting on buses. He hates, like talking to new people I don't like talking to new people I won't go to meet somebody without somebody else like it sounds weird but like I get scared like if I haven't saw somebody in a while I'll take somebody with me to go with them because I get scared 
anxiety like and I don't want to draw attention to myself if I'm just like if I start like panicking way too much and like have an anxiety attack and then have to leave I'd prefer somebody to be there like I love the fact that my boyfriend knows about my like he knows I have depression he knows I have anxiety and he knows things which can like set my anxiety off he knows what I'm he knows what I don't like doing and he does try to push me like past it sometimes and I do love him for it because he, try, he tries he does help he, try, he tries so hard to help because he doesn't like it when like I'm all panicky and scared but um there's like some things he'll do and it, it sometimes makes it worse so you should if you know somebody who has anxiety ask them I mean, I know it sounds weird but ask them if they want help or something like my friends, I'll put a bit do you want us to pay for your bus fare? And they're just like, yeah. Like, oh, well, do you want us to buy a bus ticket? And they're just like, yeah, please. Because they can't speak to bus drivers and things like that. But some people do like to do it themselves. So don't just be like, oh, she's got anxiety. So I'll do this for her. I'll do it. Like, I don't like it when people are like, oh, she's got anxiety. So I'll, I'll ask for this. For I'm like, thanks for like trying to help. But I do need to do things myself. Otherwise, I'm never going to get better. And um, like... I'm never going to get past my anxiety. It's just going to become me dependent on people. I don't want to have that to happen. Um, but yeah, I think the worst my anxiety has actually ever got was... Um, when... I'm trying to think. It was something to do with Paul's parents, but I can't remember what it was. But I remember I had to talk to them about something, and I, <laughs> I was so like scared. Like I had me Paul. I was like, Paul, you coming down with us to talk to them? He's like, Why? I'm just like, I need, I need you to come down with us. He's like, Why? I'm like, Cause I'll probably like, like I'm too scared to talk to them. <laughs> like I can't even talk to my mum about things. I can't even ask her for like, Oh, could I have a pound for the bus? Oh, can I have this? Can I? I can't just do that. I get scared. My anxiety does come from atten drawing attention to myself and getting rejection, basically. Like, I'm too afraid to have people staring at me. But I'll happily go on stage and perform. It's part of a group, not by myself. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That ain't happening. Um, I would love to do that, but no, she's scared. Um, and then... Like the fear of rejection, I don't, I don't know where that came from, but I don't want people to go no. Like it sounds weird, or like people to reject me as a person, so I get really scared of that. Um, it's probably why I try. Like it sounds so weird, but I do try really hard to impress people or to like. hard to explain but I do try quite I try a bit too much with trying to like keep people and I try to be that funny person I try to be that like person who's a bit odd and things like that like I kind of sometimes try to be something I'm not and a lot of people do find me quite annoying and things like that and I understand but the thing is like I don't want to be that person who nobody talks to I don't want to be alone. I don't want that. It's not nice. I've been there. It's not nice. Um, so I've talked about my anxiety quite a bit there. But my depression... That mainly started in high school. Um, I think the worst part that's ever been is when I nearly tried to commit suicide. And that sounds weird to say Nelly Nelly tried to commit suicide, but I got very close to trying. Um, and that was 2014, 2015 maybe. And I remember I just felt so bad. Like, I just felt nothing. I was, I was angry at myself. I was like, I hated myself. All these people... And it sounds so stupid, but it is mainly from bullies and things like that not fitting and not being that person that people want you to be 
rejection again. It, all of my, <laughs> yeah, but most of my issues do come from rejection and things like that. Um, but, uh, like, this, this was when there was a lot of stuff happening with my mum and her ex-boyfriend, like, her ex-partner. And then I was like, I was like, right, I've got to, I've got to be happy. I've got to be happy. I've got to be my mum's happy daughter to like make her smile and keep her happy and keep her like, because I am that person who is always smiling, who never looks to have issues, who always looks, who tries to always look in life for the positive thing. That's me now. I always try to look at the positives, and people are like, there's no positive in a situation. I'm like, well, I'm gonna find one otherwise, like. It's just gonna be a downward spiral from there. So when people like yeah, when I'm like oh yeah, I've got depression, they don't believe me because <laughs> I hide it. I don't want the attention. I don't want people to have the idea that I've got depression, so I'm constantly gonna be crying. I'm constantly gonna be sad. That's not depression. Depression is <laughs> depression to me. I was going to say to me, depression is this, but it's a feeling of emptiness. You don't feel sad. You don't feel happy. You don't feel angry. You don't have any emotions at that time. Yesterday. So this would have been the 12th. Yep, Tuesday the 12th of February. Because I'm filming this video on, on Pancake Day. Yay. So the same day as um my previous... Not my vlog, the previous video I done last week. That's why I'm in the same clothes, my hair's the same. But um I had a quite rough night last night and I don't know why. I don't know what like sounds weird, but things do trigger it and I don't know what triggered it, but last night I, I felt empty. I felt like something was missing. I felt like there was a hole. Like something had been took like took away from us and I just felt nothing I just kind of just wanted to cry and um it people don't realize that people suffer and do suffer in silence that they, they don't tell people about it this is like the most I've ever told anybody about this and this has gone on YouTube <laughs> so <laughs> diving ahead first as I normally do but um like Literally last night, I didn't sleep. I had about two hours of sleep. All because I felt empty. I, I, I wasn't tired. I wasn't... I was nothing, basically. It's hard to, like, explain that feeling. Especially to people who don't suffer from depression or things like that. You can't... You c it is quite a hard feeling to describe when you feel empty because people are like how do you feel empty and it's like it feels like nothing's there it feels like it's just black basically i i, I try to explain like i f say i feel like a black hole like everything's just getting swallowed up inside and there's nothing that's the way i try to explain it to people and um so last night was quite hard um but today I'm, I'm kind of back to normal I guess it's, it's weird to say like that like some days I'm just no nothing I, I don't want to go out I don't want to do anything I don't want to see anybody I just want to sit alone in my room maybe some music and headphones in my ear that that is literally it um there was a time last year um it sounds weird that I'm just talking about like my experiences with it but last year I went through well yeah just just over a year now maybe yeah <laughs> just over a year I went through a pretty tough breakup um this guy I was absolutely crazy in love with and then um he broke up with me within like two three months of us going out with each other because he was going to cheat on me 
and I remember I, I was like I was like I don't know what I was wrong with but like he, he was like oh yeah I have to break up with you because I feel like I'll cheat on you and I'm just like <laughs> she's like what do you mean she's like I have thoughts of cheating on you and I don't want to do that I was like okay and I ended up messaging him and I was like well if you cheated on us it wouldn't matter I wouldn't care as long as he came back I'd be fine with it I obviously would not be fine with that and then for like three or four days I didn't leave my room I didn't go to school I didn't go six like I didn't go into school I didn't go six form didn't do work I didn't talk to anybody <laughs> I literally stayed in my room and I was like <laughs> I didn't understand it sounds like such a stupid thing to get depressed over but it was again the rejection, which set, like rejection is the main thing which will set like my depression or anxiety off. Um, my need to please people. I I know I'm so stupid to say that, but I do have a need to please people. And because of that, it it does make my life sometimes a little bit hard. Like I'm not gonna say, oh my god, my life's the worst. It's so hard. <laughs> It just made my life a little bit harder, like, um, meeting new people, I can't, like, I don't think I'll be sitting in an interview and not fidget, um, and concentrate and say what I need to say and things like that. I would struggle quite immensely with that. Um, meet, like, meeting Paul's family, that was quite hard. I met his parents when I was drunk. The first time I ever met them, I wasn't actually going out with him. I was at his birthday party, which he had for his 17th. And I'd previously been drinking before I went, because we drank on the way over to his. And when I got there, I then drank some more. So his parents met me drunk. Not the best example. And then I realised once I actually got with him, I was like, oh my God, your parents have only like really met me drunk. Like... They, they, they like not saw me properly and I was absolutely terrified and I was like I started panicking I was like what I was like Paul what if your parents hate us what, what if they don't like us what if they think I'm a bad influence what if they think this because they've only met me drunk what if what this what if that what if that and I ended up apologizing to his parents <laughs> I was like um, I'm sorry that the first time you met me was me being drunk I'm like oh it's fine it's fine they were like so understanding but like then I met his nana and his auntie and I basically didn't say a word when I first met them and I basically stood right next to Paul like I almost hid behind him and he's like that it's the fear of rejection especially like my anxiety flares up more when I'm with somebody who I care immensely about. Especially with... <laughs> I'm so stupid, but my anxiety... It could sound so stupid to say, oh yeah, my boyfriend kind of gives me more anxiety. But... <laughs> he, he himself doesn't... I get... Affected more anxiety than I do depression. However, um, Paul, <laughs> that's the story, but Paul does kind of affect my anxiety a little bit more because I care about him that much and I, I don't know, but I want to please, like, I want to make him happy and I want to please him and make, like, and all of that so it does make it a little harder it's the same with family things like that my anxiety is quite bad at that because I want to make them happy I want to please them I want to make sure that they don't think I'm a waste of space basically um 
and also it kind of goes back to school as well with that there are some days I want to like be late for school and I just won't go in because I'm afraid that I'll go in and then they'll be like <laughs> it's such a stupid thing to think but the way my head works is not normal and it thinks that because I haven't went in that people are gonna hate it and <laughs> but it does end up being that when I'm not in constantly But yeah, um, I want to talk a little bit as well about insomnia. So that's another thing I suffer from. I have insomnia, depression, anxiety and some other things, but I'm not. The other things, they do affect me a bit more and they kind of tie in with everything, but I'm not going to talk about them because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't want to. Um, But insomnia basically fucked up my sleeping basically because it is due to my anxiety and my depression that I have insomnia and it's not nice <laughs> it's not nice at all when you don't sleep you can't sleep you just not that like people say oh yeah insomnia you're just not tired and you don't sleep I'm tired I feel the tiredness my body basically runs on like two three hours of sleep at night like it's ridiculous and people are like oh I got sleeping pills got sleeping pills I'm like no I don't want I don't want pills I don't want to take pills like I know people who take pills for sleeping I don't want to because what if I got to a situation when my depression and I just wanted it to all end it sounds so stupid to say that but with depression it is unpredictable with me some days I'll be fine I'll be happy I'll be fine other days I'll just be like there's no point <laughs> like literally there's no point and them days it sounds so weird but I try when I feel that I stay in my room because I know if I leave my room I'll go and try and get a knife or something sharp and I'll, I'll end up doing something stupid basically or I'll go and find like some pills <laughs> something like that and I will do I'll end up doing something stupid so I try to not <laughs> have pills and things like that unless I need them. Especially sleeping pills because you can quite easily overdose on them. I don't want <laughs> I don't want to have sleeping pills because <sighs> I say this now because I don't want to end my life. It's not the best. <laughs> it's not the worst. And yeah, there is those days when I'm like, it is the worst and it needs to finish. But then when I get out of that little <laughs> strop thing, it's like to call it, I'll be fine. And life will go on. So I try to, <laughs> stupid, but I try to limit the things that I know I could end up harming myself with. <laughs> it's a stupid thing to say, I know, but... My depression can't get that bad some days. I've had um, times when I've been at my book, like there was this time, this was about last year, and um, I was at my boyfriend's house and he was asleep and everybody else was asleep in his house and I couldn't sleep. And I remember sitting at the bottom of his bed, just crying. <laughs> I was, just, I was just sitting at the bottom of his bed just crying and he since he was asleep, he's a heavy sleeper and he tends to not wake up so I was like his brother wasn't there so it was just me and him in the bedroom and I was sitting at the bottom of his bed and crying and then um like the thought happened I just call them the thoughts <laughs> the thought happened and I then ended up I lay down next to him and I was still crying and he he woke up and he, he saw that I was like crying and he's like what's wrong and I was like and then I told him and then I kind of made him cry because <laughs> if, you, if your girlfriend's sitting crying and having thoughts of that you're just like holy shit but <laughs> That's definitely one of my worst days recently. 
like, I, it sounds so weird, but I'm so glad I was at his house because he helped so much. He didn't even, like, it sounds so weird, but he just talked to me. Basically, he was like, well, if you do that, we can't have this. We can't do that. We ca- we can't get married, like, when we're older. We can't have kids. We can't get a house and have it, like, because I keep saying I want, like, three dogs, two cats, a pig, and a lizard, and all these, like, animals. He's like, well, if you do that, we can't have all that. We we can't go to Thailand. We can't go to Japan. We can't do all those things if you do that. And it sounds so stupid, but that kind of worked. When people were like, if you end up doing that, then you're going to miss all of this. That is definitely a reassurance. So sometimes that can help some people. So if you know somebody who is having suicidal thoughts, try to like, reason with them. Don't be like, oh, well, you, you can do that. You're going to make your parents upset. Because sometimes you don't care. That's how bad it's got. I have literally got to a stage where I didn't care if my mum was sad, didn't care if my dad, if my brother was sad, my dad, my aunties, my uncles, my granddad, I didn't care. Basically, the only person who stopped me was my boyfriend at that time. And he didn't, he still to this day doesn't know. And I'm not going to say his name, but I was like, what if I was like, if I do this, I'm going to leave him and he's going to be alone and I don't want him to be alone. Because I knew that my mum had my brother. My dad's got his girlfriend. And my auntie at that time had her well, had her boyfriend. My granddad had his mum. My my mum, his daughter, like his other daughter, his sons. They had other people. Like, he had his family as well. But I was like, if I do that, I'm going to be, <laughs> like... I would be, it wouldn't be a good thing to do for him. So if you know somebody who is having suicidal thoughts and things like that, try to think of things which you know they care about and be like, well, if you do that, you're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to do that. You, you won't be able to do certain things with life. And it does get better. Like, no matter what situation you're in, it will get better. I, I, there's always rainy days there's always those clouds in the sky but sometimes there is glimmers of sunlight and it's it is nice and there is those good days they have bad days you can ask like <laughs> parents uncles aunties grandparents they will all say that there's bad days that's good days and they've lived they've lived lives they, they know they understand. And if you take your life, you're being a little bit selfish. That's another thing. It sounds stupid to say that, but that's you're going to take away yourself from all those people who care about you. And things like, like Now, I think, like, <laughs> when I think of those times when I nearly done it, or I tried to, or was planning to, I was like, I was like, why? Like, <laughs> I'm like, why? If I did do it, I wouldn't be with the person who I'm with now. I wouldn't be the person I am now. I wouldn't have met the people I know. I wouldn't be like, happy. I wouldn't have so wicked. Like, literally, it's such a, like, a little silly thing, but I wouldn't have went to London. I wouldn't have so wicked. I wouldn't have met my, uh, I wouldn't have met my boyfriend. I wouldn't have talked to him. I wouldn't have got with him. I wouldn't have spent the past amazing year with him. <laughs> Life is a roller coaster. You got the bumps. You've got loop to loops. You've got the steep inclines. But it it does also have its perks. It's got the fun bits. You no matter what issues. Well, issues you have, whatever problem. I hate the fact that they're called problems. Whatever problem you have and things like that, they can be solved. They can be helped. Sometimes with medical help, sometimes with like medicine and things like that, or counselling, therapy, things like that. But sometimes it can just be little things like 
<laughs> if I ever stop thinking. I like my candles. And I have two candles now. Which I'm... Which I light basically every night. One has a H, which is lovely for me. And the other one has a P, which is for my boyfriend, Paul, obviously. <laughs> and, um, so I light them and they basically make me think of it. It's just little thoughts as well. Like, if you have bad thoughts, write them down on a bit of paper. If you are feeling immensely depressed, it sounds so weird, but try and find something good in every, like, every day you do. Try and find something good. Write it down. Write down that good thing which happened. And then when you feel really down again, you can then look back on those things and be like, oh, that was a good thing which happened. That happened, so that's great. Like, little things can make you happy. <laughs> like, literally... There's so many videos on YouTube and you can just be like, try not to laugh. Some of them are hilarious. And I, I have friends who know me and they know that I like memes. And if I'm down, they're just like, look at the meme. I'm just like, okay. And then I'll just burst out laughing and I'll be fine again. Simple little things help. They really do. But mental health does need to be talked about more. More people need to know it's okay it's okay to have mental health. It's okay to have anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, insomnia. Um, I'm trying to think of other mental health things. There's tons of mental health things, but I can't think about them. But it is fine to have mental health issues. It's fine. Talk to people about them. There, you don't need to suffer in silence. There is people there to help. In Newcastle, where I live, we have Newcroft Centre, we have Streetwise, we have Ways, we have... Um, oh, there's another place. There's another place in Jasmond, which I can't remember. But, like, there's so many... There's literally in my school as well, we have t people who come in and you can talk to them, like their counsellors and like nurses. You can come in and talk to them. Like like they're in Mondays and Tuesdays and we can talk to them whenever we want about anything we want. And more schools should have counsellors. If you need them, they can bring them in. You can talk to your parents about it. It might might be hard, but if your parents know what is going through your head, they can. They may have some experiences. They may be able to help you, and it it needs to be helped. More people need to <laughs> realize it is okay to talk about mental health. <laughs> I think mental health is just as needed is obviously physical health because you could be physically fit but mentally you could there could be so many like, issues which need like which could put your health in danger which could put your life in danger which could restrict restrict you from living and things like that and it's your mind your mind is the most powerful thing you can have and more people need to realise it is okay to have them. It's okay to talk about them. It's okay to be a little bit different. <laughs> it's okay. Don't Like, literally, don't worry. If you have any mental health issues... It sounds so weird, but... It, if you have them, it doesn't mean you're any different from anybody else. Just because you have something. It's just a little thing different. It's fine. Does it make you any less of a human? If anything, it makes you more of a human. It's fine. It's fine to have issues. So don't ever feel afraid to talk about them. Don't ever feel afraid to be yourself. Like, I'm, I myself, I'm afraid to be myself sometimes to around some people. But it takes a little while for me to... It may take a little while to be comfortable around people. It takes me a little while. But I do get there eventually. 
and it's the best thing ever when I can very com like be comfortable around people. Like it's took me a year to be like nearly fully comfortable around like Paul's parents and stuff like that. And other times we have to say I'm nearly comfortable around them, but there's like some things I'm just like <laughs> and like the way his family is, it's totally different to mine. So like I was just like, What the hell? I was like, Is this what no I was like, is this what a normal family is supposed to be like? And it's mine weird. Like, but it's okay. It's okay to be different. It's okay to have little things. It's okay. Don't worry. It's fine. It's all good. Okay? <laughs> so always remember it's always good like it will be fine. You will be fine. You're strong. Everything will be okay. May take a little while. Might be a little tough. But that is life. Sometimes you need to kick up the arse. <laughs> Sometimes some tough love. I have given people tough love in the past and it has helped. Like, <laughs> it's fine. You will get there. You will be fine again. Don't worry if you have mental health issues. If you start getting worried, go see therapists, go to cancer, go to the doctors. And they they are they are there to help. There'll be like in Newcastle you can message like organizations and things like that. If you literally Google mental health organizations, there will be ones where they've got like chat <laughs> like there'll be like online chats and like you can call centres and things like that and they are there to help. So don't ever feel like you're alone in it. You're not. There is thousands and thousands of people all over the world who have mental health problems and it needs to be recognised. It is a thing. It is real. Mental health issues are real. They affect many, many people all differently. Like you can say you have depression, but somebody else could have depression as well and it would be totally different to the way you you witness it. Like, I have a couple of friends who also have depression but theirs is different like they cope with it different to me they get like different they have different triggers and things like that it's everybody is different but there's a way to help everybody so don't worry okay if you need help google <laughs> google is a thing google is great it's Google the mental like a mental health helpline, and there will be help. There's help online. There's help on a phone. There's help. You can do like Skype chats and stuff with doctors to help. There is many many YouTube videos on mental health as well, so you're not alone. That's the main thing to remember. You you are not going through it alone. There's thousands of people just like you who feel like this. You're not by yourself. Don't worry. But you have to stay strong. You have to remember it will get better. And most importantly, you are not alone in your situation. There's always people there. There's always people who will be there to care, like who care about you. You may not think it, Trust me, there is people who will care, who care for you, and want and like help you. There'll always be people, medically, <laughs> and also like family, friends. You may think you haven't got any friends, but there is friends. I'm speaking from my own experiences. I thought I had no friends, and there's so many people who I had who cared for me, who care for me now. But don't ever feel alone. That is like another main thing to remember. You're not alone. There's always people there to help. <laughs>